back. Division 2! Live with Tux, and it's Monday. What's up, chat? What's up? What's up? What's up? We've got a good stream for you today. Excited to do this one. It's uh, kind of part of a series we've been doing all weekend, and this is going to wrap it up for the event. But before I get started, let's just make sure I'm coming in loud and clear. I will turn down the music in just a few moments, but if you can hear me if I'm coming in good on your end, please, somebody in chat, give me a hashtag Tux Live. That lets me know that my audio is doing its job. Otherwise, bounce your head a bit. We're going to start in just a second. loud and clear and so is the music apparently <laughs> so um, let me turn that down just a little bit all right all right <clears throat> so what's going on everybody uh welcome to the stream and so today um got some good stuff we're going to be showcasing how to get exclusive high quality dark zone gear without stepping one foot into the DZ. This is part of a series that I've done before, so I have been tracking the quality of these dark zone items that I've been getting, and I'll explain how you too can get high quality dark zone gear. And this is how I gotten all my dark zone gear, and I'll get into that in just a few minutes. But uh, let's see what's up with the chat. So uh, welcome everybody in chat. Let's see who's joined us today. We got James Jacoby, my boy, and Rossi Sage also. Uh, these are uh, dudes from Texas Players Club. Uh, if you guys don't know everybody that has a little skull next to their name as part of Texas Players Club, appreciate you guys. AG, evening, brother. Evening on your side. It's evening on your side, huh? Okay, well, it's still it's barely the afternoon of mine. So where you where you hollering at from, Ag? Are you in the UK? Appreciate you, man. What's up, Jacob Starkey? My boy Tux, he says. <laughs> What's up, brother? Uh, what did you craft today? What are you saying here? Yo, Tux, I'm struggling to find that uh, striker holster with skill on it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know the battle, my man. Yeah, if you can craft it, you know, just do that. It'd be be just as easy sometimes. Or easier sometimes. If I have that option, sometimes I, I take both routes, you know, just to cheat a little bit. But, um, you know, if you if you need to, I think you can also go a little bit of crit chance on that build, and then um, and that's not gonna hurt either. So if you find a crit chance piece in the meantime, use that one, and then roll a skill tier on it until you get the skill damage one. But. Um, yeah, you know, don't don't always sweat your builds being perfect as perfect as mine are sometimes. I'm just sort of ornery about it, <laughs> so you know. AG's from Scotland, all right, that's right. I think you mentioned that in the, in the uh, stream the other day. Appreciate you, man. Welcome, my brother from Scotland. Stuart Taylor, morning, Tux. Where are you coming from, Stuart? Still morning where you're, we are hitting this up at. I'm on the west coast of the United States, so I'm in Portland, Oregon. So it is 12.30 my time. Okakpu Emmanuel. What's going on, brother? Welcome to the stream. Matthew. Evening on your side, too. United Kingdom. Stop by to watch the stream. All right. Appreciate you, Matthew. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our, our boys out there on the island. On the big island. Island. I'm going to use a Jamaican accent for it, though. <laughs> That's my horrible Jamaican accent. Uh, let's see, 14 all 404 here says, Hey Tux, thanks for the content. Just wanted to ask if you're planning any builds with the Ravenous, that exotic rifle, with your Tux flavor added to the builds. Tux sauce, Tux sauce, Tux sauce. Yeah, so um, really good question, actually. And you know what? I, I believe you asked that question in, in a chat the other day, and I didn't get to it, so I do apologize for that. Hey guys, if you do have questions that you would like me to answer, uh, definitely drop them in the chat. But it does help if you start the question with the word question so that way i can um 
it sort of catches my eye and I know that there's a question that needs to be asked. And it doesn't guarantee that I will get to it, but I do try to get to all of your comments and questions uh, because I appreciate you guys a lot for supporting my channel and showing up and taking the time to post your questions. It really does help me. It does help the channel. Also, I should say right now, if you're not subscribed, you should be. And so it's easy. Let me show you how to do it and it's free. So just, uh, just below this video, there's a subscribe button. Smash it. <laughs> it's not gonna cost you anything, um, but it really does help my channel, so I appreciate that. And also hit the like right now, so you don't forget to do that. And then um, you can't comment while we're live, but you can chat. So, but afterwards, if you do happen to swing by the uh, feed again or the, the video again, then definitely drop a comment. That also helps. And uh, just to get the uh, housekeeping out of the way, I should also let you know that I do classified builds which are secret builds made just for texas players club true and hardcore bandito member level so these are extra builds i make as a thank you for supporting me and the channel and therefore the entire community because that's what i do i build and support the community and if you want to tap into these secret builds you can get access today by making sure you're at least a true bandito member level and that's also easy to do you can just click the join button that's right below this video so all right we got some of the business out of the way some of the business out of the way um so uh back to you 14 all yes 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 the ravenous build you know i just there's a few video there's just a few weapons that are really difficult the sort of one trick ponies um you know i was excited to get the ravenous but I, i'll be honest with you i was more excited to get the regulus and um the regulus is just a beast uh, you guys probably saw me uh, using it in the slushy build i put out the other day but um the ravenous the problem that i have with the ravenous is that uh you can't use it from cover very well you can't use its talent from cover so when you're shooting from cover it's just a rifle <laughs> it just becomes a standard rifle you lose your talent and that's because um you can't switch shoulders when you're shooting around a corner or you're shooting from certain cover points and so um you have to get out of cover in order to switch shoulders uh, due to the mechanics of the controller now if you're a pc player you might not have that problem i don't know but for xbox players in order for us to shoot um switch shoulders we have to be out of cover it doesn't work when we're in cover so um that makes it a problem for me right you know getting out of cover in legendary or whatever it's, it's just no bueno so but the gun is good i like it so I can make a build for it, but that's the only problem that I have. It sort of becomes situational because of that. Hope you understand that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get to that build. I'll put it on the list. Um, but guns like the 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 that and like the merciless. I do pick up the merciless from time to time, thinking I'm gonna make a build for it, but it just feels so horrible. I just can't. You know, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't just can't do it. it. Doesn't feel good. What's up, John Wishart? Another brother from Scotland. All right, we got a couple of you guys here. Appreciate that. All right. Um, and so, yeah, man, but yeah, it, it, it's not that the gun isn't good. I mean, the talent is awesome. The bonus armor, and I mean, I, you can just bring Chungus down really well. And I did create a build for it a long time ago. Um, and so I just need to dust it off. It's a dusty gun. But yeah, I like the challenge of creating these builds. I, um, you know, like you guys probably saw the 511 build. That was a challenge build. So, uh, and then I was recently challenged to make a pistol build, a pistol skill build. So I'm working on that one right now. Uh, which is going to be a lot of fun to do. Actually, it's going to shred. I put, I slapped one together and I tested it just the other day and it's going to shred as a side note. But um... Okay, okay, okay. So let me uh, get to the topic of the day and then I will jump back into the chat and see what you guys have to say. But, um... so, okay. Again, today, today's topic is how to get Dark Zone exclusive gear without stepping one foot into the DZ. All right? So... Um, if you guys have been following me this weekend, this long weekend, I've been sh talking about how you need to be farming the current global event, which ends tonight. Okay, so you got one day to do it. Um, the event is called Reanimated. I'm sure you guys are all playing with it. And you see, you see the little where it says heroic in the top left of my screen. Right next to that, there's a little red icon, a little red pink icon thing. That's the reanimated event. Right now, it's turned on. And so how you turn on events, sorry if you, if you guys are experienced players, but for you new people, if you don't know this, you go from your menu, you go to seasons, and then it'll tell you which events are activated. So it shows that uh, reanimated is, is, is an event that's active right now. 
I'm going and when you click into it at the bottom there you can see where it says deactivate it's activated right now but you can activate it or deactivate it so that's how you do that and then you also have a rewards track so they give you a rewards track for uh, playing them uh, playing the event and completing challenges and in these rewards it's actually a really good rewards track I really like these um, but inside of them are named item caches you know other various things season caches which are very valuable um, and exotic caches okay but the point is by playing this event you get these little uh, red stars right that you see here that are um, right now i have 151 red stars so my goal was to get enough red stars to uh to purchase 20 named item caches okay and the reason why we want named item caches is because inside those things are named items of course but named item caches also include those exclusive named items that you can only get in the dark zone and the odds of getting them are really high if you've been following my channel from the get-go then you know that i do videos where i've been opening 20 named item caches back to back so that i can evaluate and demonstrate the quality behind these things so that you know whether they are or are not worth your time and named item caches are definitely worth your time and so my track record is about 60 percent so 60 percent of the things that are coming out of these named item caches are dark zone exclusive named items very valuable things very valuable um i mean my favorite gear is basically hidden in the dark dark zone so you got the virginian you got the rail splitter which is the build that i showed uh uh yesterday really good build by the way if you don't have the rail splitter you need it but uh yeah so this is a dark zone exclusive assault rifle it is badass honestly it is um the virginian really badass it's a one hitter quitter so these are things that you can get in the dark zone also the tdi card um really badass this is the rifle i mean the pistol that gives you the extra skill tier also dark zone exclusive so all these things oh and the pistol the orbit which is has perfect finisher probably the best pistol in the game um well i wouldn't say the best i mean i love my regulus is the best but you know it's up there right it's up there for not being an exotic if it's not an exotic i'm either running the orbit or the tdi card it's one of the two you know so anyways uh really good stuff and also i'm uh i was also featuring yesterday's build the devil's do with perfect clutch also a dark zone exclusive item all of these things and look at the quality on these on these guys look at the quality on this like i haven't even re-rolled this i don't think or maybe i added damage to target to the cover but the quality is really high and it's in these things this is a perfect this one came almost perfect god roll i optimized that core attribute but um that's how it, that's how the name item cache delivered it it delivers it things look at this one perfect look at it triple god roll perfect i think i added damage to targets out of cover but that's how i got it out of again a named item cache and so that's what i'm going to demonstrate for you today so i've been working hard all weekend farming this event so that i can get uh, what i what's where, where i landed which is 151 red stars now i stopped there because the rewards track actually let me go back to the rewards track the rewards track uh, gives us two named item caches, and I saved those, so I didn't open them. Okay, so I'm gonna collect those now. Let me claim these. So I'm gonna claim this. Is gonna put it in my uh, inventory, and then cool. So so that's how you that's how you get your rewards. Otherwise, if you don't collect them, they're gonna throw them in your mailbox later. So you can see here I've. I have two named items uh, caches now. We're gonna open those in a minute. And I do have some exotic caches hold, taking up space here, but I'm saving those for another video. So look at this guy jamming out, rocking out. What's up, brother? What's up, brother? Let me say hello. Hello. <laughs> and so you can come up here. And so this is where you spend your named item caches. Okay, so a lot of you, I believe it or not, I get a lot of questions about on where the season vendor, that's called the season vendor. So outside of the, uh, the White House, you, you hang a left, there's the everyday vendor over here, right? But right across from that is a season vendor and it tells you if there's an event going on. But um, yeah, so these are the things that you can buy. And as I was saying, do not buy, yesterday I made a mistake, I was saying the wrong words, but do not buy exotic caches with your red stars. It's, in the, it's They're horribly expensive. 20 red stars is really expensive, guys. That's 20, think about it like this, that's 20 shade levels, 20 shade levels. And you can get these from, uh see the uh the daily and weekly challenges remember that so every single week can get these and if you have more than one character you can get multiple per week so anyways 
don't spend your stars on on these uh, it's just too much of a variable there's a lot of exotics so if you're looking for one in particular like the scorpio or or the memento backpack i mean just like you're gonna have to spend a lot of uh shade levels in order to land on the on the lucky one and it's just odds aren't on your favor the legacy season caches caches are second best um but like especially if you're looking for system corruption gear then that's where you want to focus on that's the only way to get system corruption outside of the dark zone every now and again you'll see it's rare but you'll see system correction uh corruption gear being sold at um a DZ vendor, which it's really rare that you see it there. I've also seen some pieces being sold at the clan vendor. So, uh, same with y'all. Um, but named item caches, uh, and then optimization caches, those aren't bad either, uh, but these are more expensive. Now, legacy season caches, you do get two items. So, but you're also gonna get things like Hunter's Fury gear, Eclipse gear, because that was all part of uh, the season rewards track. So anything that was on the season rewards track is gonna be included here. Some of that will be Dark Zone exclusive gear, like the Dark Winter, the TDI card. Those were on Season Rewards. So, but we're gonna use, focus on named item caches. Those are my favorite. They're really efficient. There are only eight red stars. Now, you are gonna get crap included in this too. Things that you get in the, uh, in, you know, the DZ open world, like the Burnout or whatever, something like that. Um, those are part of this too, but the numbers are uh, tend to be in our favor. So, let's fill up uh let's fill up our stash with as many of these so i'm gonna spend all my red stars on named item caches and then we're gonna open them up and see if lady luck is on our side so i'm looking for two uh, specific things which is gonna make it really difficult but i'm looking for um okay so i bought as many as i could and so i'm gonna have to come back in the second round so I, you can see here that i filled up my stash space um with named item caches so i got some exotic caches um taking up space so i'm gonna have to come back and, and buy a few more but you get the idea so let's go open up these bad boys um so yeah i'm looking for the death grips with crit chance or crit damage already on them um i got lots of death grips but i but i want to roll them into an armor core i mean a weapon damage core and i'm also looking for the empress guard knee pads with armor regen already on them so I, I usually i usually get those so let's see what let's see what the game is going to bring us today so let's open up this name item cash so contractors gloves these are not a dark zone exclusive item uh but they're not bad and this is what i would expect as far as quality so there it's about the, at that 75 percentile so this one comes to damage to armor this is a, a pretty good one i'm probably gonna end up trashing it because um i already have more than i can handle <laughs> Of those bad boys but uh the white death uh is also a light zone item so this this is one's crap so i don't like the talent on it and i don't like magazine size i prefer a damage target side cover so this one would be junk to me um so i'll, I'll scratch that one so there's 0 for 2 0 for 2 but i'm not worried that's why i opened up 20 of these things uh liquid engineer all right let's see if we got a good one i like getting these drops Ooh, look at that triple gall roll so this is what i'm talking about look at the quality on that right so liquid engineer is dark zone exclusive so uh correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure it is you can't get this outside of the dark zone you get the other one the chess piece version you know that has perfectly efficient on it but you don't get this one and that's really good god roll armor god roll armor regen and headshot damage so i'm probably gonna roll off headshot damage and i'd probably put on you know crit damage on there or something like that but that's really cool that's a good one um i could also roll off the armor core and put on the skill tier um this actually works with skill with skills so skills can proc perfect bloodsucker i also tested yesterday a little tip uh, for those of you who were watching my build video uh with the rail splitter uh the skills check this out guys listen secret 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 because i don't i'm not sure anybody knows this yet but i'm gonna build around it so the skills, all right? Just like the skills can proc perfect bloodsucker, the skills proc clutch. <laughs> yeah, the skills proc clutch. Armor on kill, all right? That's a pretty big deal. So I went into legendary yesterday, just kind of fooling around. I was like, I wonder if skills proc clutch. So I went to District Union Arena 
slapped on clutch on a skill build my uh, i put on the um this uh basically this backpack here on the skill build just to see if it would work and the skills proc clutch do you see the second part uh kills allow you to repair up to 100 percent armor for four to ten seconds so the skills get a kill to proc that it's pretty cool anyways so i'm gonna build around that uh, I thought that was interesting, but yeah, so this is definitely a keeper for me. I'm happy for that. That is a Dark Zone exclusive gear. So we are one out of three there. Uh, let me see. Let me get to your questions real quick. Actually, uh, let me examine this um, so you guys can see it. And then let me get to uh, answer a few of your questions along the way here. So let me scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Yes. Stuart Taylor from New Zealand just woke up to tune in. All right, all right. Yeah, so my feet's coming in upside down for you. So I appreciate you sticking around anyways. <laughs> my boys from, my Kiwis from the NZ. Uh, Jacoby says, yo, I have found a way, but I have, but I need a checkpoint. And Tux, that sniper build hits hard as hell, bro. Yeah, so if you guys didn't see, um, so I put out uh, three or four builds for this event. Um, the first one was called Brain Slushy, and I used the Virginian, the Regulus, and the White Death. That was That's a lot of fun, because you're just ba basically dangerous at all ranges. The next one is the One Tap Bosses uh, build that, that uh, has a title, Best DPS, question mark. And that thing is just lethal. If you want to get a lot of it, that's how I got all these red stars for this event, is I basically uh, used that build the majority of the time. And you're just headshots give you extra xp and you need and then i ran five directives on the sniper build five directives are really easy it's basically you feel like you're playing on story story mode and i was just popping heads definitely watch those videos they're a lot of fun uh but really good build that's jacoby's uh, jacob starkey's talking about sorry i kept calling you jacoby jacob uh gt 234 life yes yeah, up trying to still find the knee pads with one percent armor regen yeah those are called the emperor's guard knee pads they're named marikami knee pads with one percent armor regen as a secondary attribute that's exactly what i'm looking for here today too so fingers crossed we will get it and um so i always collect enough red stars to buy 20 of these bad boys what's going on sam good evening from norway all right good to see you again John Wishart from Scotland. I think I caught that. Uh, Jay Wizzy. Well, Jay Wilsey, I should say. Remember, everyone, before you forget to like the video. Oh, man, he's my trusty. He's always doing that. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, hit that like, guys. Hit that like. A little reminder from Jay Wilsey, who's got my back. Appreciate you, man. Uh, Arturo Lee's got a question for me. How crazy would legendaries be with hunters for bosses instead of the main ones we have now? Uh, Yeah, really crazy. Because <laughs> those guys are a pain in the ass. I kind of don't like playing hunters in, like, the, you know, when you get to the top of, um, you know, the summit, they're kind of a pain in the ass. I like the hunters, and I like fighting hunters. I love fighting hunters, but I like them more as a surprise. Um, kind of like in the open world where you summon them, and it's just kind of does that, you know, it's kind of like, ah, oh, it's kind of spooky. You know, so I'd want it to be sort of like that. So I kind of like them. I don't know if I'd like them as at the end where you're expecting them, and then it kind of becomes a drag. It's like, oh. It's drawn out fights they're annoying they heal up a lot and blah 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 you can't use your skills but i like i like it more as a surprise so i would like them like like as like the rogues do where they just like suddenly appear and they kind of try to jump you i think it'd be more fun like that but i hear you i'm open to anything any any changes is would be cool uh just to mix it up but if i had my choice i would like them to appear in missions like rogues but um uh let's see here name cashers or someone okay so i'm on your six tux <laughs> what happened atomic appreciate you man yeah please somebody don't smash their phone screens when i say smash i didn't uh don't smash your butt your your, your join or subscribe button that hard <laughs> uh okay okay what's up ultra mega man welcome brother digital dogs boys from the players club appreciate you guys i'm glad you're catching this one live digital uh, see you commenting. Uh, I noticed you've been watching the replays, so I appreciate that as well. Eric, 
uh, Sebastian Nyberg Vasquez. So yeah, you get the named item, you get the stars. You gotta make sure you have your events turned on, all right? So you gotta, um, these events aren't every week. And so that's why, I mean, I, I give you guys a really good heads up. So make sure you have your notifications turned on and you're subscribed. Uh, but I give you a heads up that you need to farm these events. And this one has been going on all week. We're at the tail end of it now. But you see at the bottom, I got 47 red stars left. I just purchased um, a bunch of name item caches, but I had 151. But that's how you get the red stars are from these special events that grant you red stars by completing the challenges. Uh, but just by playing the, the event, by having the event turned on and playing, every time you level up, you also get a red star. So you can get unlimited DZ gear, basically, Dark Zone gear. Uh, as long as you're playing the game and as long as you're leveling up is the, the more you level up the more gear so i play with uh, uh i play with all my um directives turned on and so that i can get the max amount of xp and level up a lot another uh, white death so it's typical we get duplicates of things uh this is not bad this is not bad it's got uh almost triple god rolls i don't like the talent uh, and i actually don't like ro rolling crits on my rifle on my uh, marksman rifles usually uh, so I, pr I would have preferred um, a damage targets out of cover. So I'm probably going to trash that one. But uh, yeah, let's see what else we get. So I think we're one for four now. Is that right, guys? Devil's do. All right. We've just been talking about that. So let's see. So we've opened up five. So we're two for five. So Devil's do is the named um, Cheska backpack that has perfect clutch on it and the build video that i put out yesterday you guys you gotta watch it if you haven't seen it yet because i'm using perfect clutch and a lot of people are sleeping on this because they don't understand how to use it and i demonstrate how to use it and i uh, and I, I showed in the um the shooting range and then also out in the field but it's a really good talent it is armor on kill don't let the confusing words in the talent confuse you and turn you away from it but i really like it that's not a bad one it's got a crit chance of weapon handling uh this is the one that i'm rolling which has got a crit chance of crit damage so i'll probably trash that one just because i uh, already have a good one i could optimize this one if i wanted to i just haven't gotten around to it but i'm really enjoying this build actually it might be one of my favorite assault rifle builds right now the time to kill on this is incredible and you will see that my time to heal is also incredible. Remember, it's not how much armor you have, it's how fast you recover. This has 100% armor on kill. 100% armor on kill. Thanks to Perfect Clutch, because that's what it is. Kills allow you to re repair up to 100%, as long as you're critting. So as long as you're critting, you repair up to 100%, and then I got 10% armor on kill from Gunner. Anyways, so really good backpack. So we're two out of five. Two for five, so that's good right now, guys. That's basically we're at 60%. Or it's a little less than a half, actually. But we'll get there. Pyromaniac. Okay, this is not a Dark Zone exclusive. So now we're at two for six. But uh, it is a really good gun. I'd prefer not reload. Actually, reload speed is not bad for this for this particular variant because it sort of has a slow reload time. But I would prefer a damage um, modifier under that attribute instead of reload speed. But perfectly united, really good, really good for you pyromaniacs, for you pyros out there. So um, if you don't have one of those, then you know the uh, name item caches are a good way to get them. Actually, I don't see it drop very often. It's pretty rare that I see it drop in the open world. Funny enough. The mop uh, is also an open world item, so I don't believe this is a named item. Wait, is it is is this a dark zone exclusive? Can anybody answer that? I'm trying to, I'm, I'm drawing a blank here. Uh, Eric, no, no, no. Uh, those, not every event. So going back to your question, Eric, um, not every event gives red stars. So, um, and that is confusing to people. So, like, Circ League is not a red star event so you notice there's no red stars there you get it does have a rewards track though so there is a rewards track here you see that so you do get name item caches from these but you're only going to get a couple there's usually only two um they're worth playing if you like it i mean i i i sort of get bored with these but um if you're out for the rewards and you you, you know these are good it's good little rewards track so you can complete this in basically a day two days I mean, sometimes you can just do a couple of the easy ones and then uh, they usually run for two weeks and then 
uh, come back and do the, the do it again, and then you'll have all your rewards tracked. But um, yeah, those don't give red stars, so it's only certain events. Um, the ones like um, reanimated uh, Hollywood, SHD exposed, Golden Bullet. Yep, and that's it. So these were all red star events. Those particular ones. The ones that you have to act, any of the ones that you have to activate or deactivate on your map are the ones, uh, and what I mean by that is like, look down below where it says activate or deactivate there. That's what I mean, that little X. And so any of the ones that you have to activate or deactivate. The other ones uh, are just, you know, are like league, league stuff. You don't have to activate this. You either play it or you don't play it. Um, same with this, you either play it or you don't play it. So uh, any of the ones you have to activate or deactivate. So let's see what else we get here. Anyway, somebody answer me that question for me is the mop dark zone exclusive. I'm just drawing a blank and appreciate the help so that we can keep our count. <clears throat> what up dark devil? Appreciate you, man. Welcome, welcome players club. Uh, question, best place to farm materials and how can you farm? Um, the best place for me to farm materials, you know, I you can do the little farming routes, you know, um, like the tunnels, um, and I can I can show that to you actually. Uh, so we just got the commando, uh, really good, really good rolls, guys. Look at that. Anybody like this weapon? I've never really used it, but hitting enemies with no armor grants fifty percent headshot damage for eight seconds. Fifty percent headshot damage is actually a lot. This is a high RPM bad boy uh, with low damage. So you're sort of spanning headshots with this one. Um, hitting enemies with no armor. So that's basically your grunts, right? Your your reds, non-elites. So, you know, there's a lot of them in the game, but there's, uh, there's also elites. Um, so, uh, but to answer your question about farming, uh, so here... This is the South Dark Zone, just outside of the South Dark Zone, about right here on your map. There's a little um, like building, a little out structure, and that's got stairways that lead into the tunnels. And then these tunnels uh, will carry you basically all the way, should think of for a while, like all the way over here, I think, and uh, somewhere like that. And um, you know, you can just go into there and get some loot, but I don't I'm not a big fan of that guys I think like just when it comes to getting loot play control points Just always make sure you play control points make that part of your gaming strategy You get a lot of XP and control points, but you also get a lot of gear and loot that you're deconstructing um, But yeah, I'm always crafting guys. So the best way to get loot uh, is Is from your watch and I'm always crafting so you just got to make sure you level up and that's why control points are important also is because you're leveling up and then you get those rewards and then I can spend these rewards on, um, you know, SSD levels or if I need electronics, right? So, and then otherwise, if you need a uh, gear components, then you need to fight factions. So I just say play control points, you know, but um, if you find, if you're doing a lot of crafting and then you're finding yourself uh, running low on resources, try to stay away from things like the summit and legendary you don't get a lot of resources from those two game modes so uh this is crap so perfectly efficient this is uh, something you can get in the light zone and it's also a crappy version i mean the rolls are crap i don't like health on it or repair skills especially if i'm going to use uh, perfectly efficient but uh, the quality is high on it otherwise they're three quarter rolls as, as we would hope for so uh let's see what else we get Come on, knee pads. Another commando. So duplicate. That's typical. Always get two of something. This one's got damage to armor, which is better. Hey, this is actually pretty neat. Damage to armor with... It sort of has... Uh, because you're saying focus on enemies with health, with no armor. And you get 50% headshot damage. And then you have damage to armor for that as well. That's actually kind of interesting, I would say. But I'm not so sure about that sniper rifle. Um... Uh, and if anybody likes that sniper rifle, let me know because I just haven't really given it a chance. And then another mop, another duplicate. Uh, damage armor, armor, kill, shotgun, and it's optimist. Yeah, that's not bad. With optimist, it's actually pretty good. But I have enough mops, so I'm probably going to trash all these. Is the mop, did we say? Did anybody give me that answer? Is the mop a Dark Zone exclusive? Anybody know? 
uh ag's got a good answer for you solar farm is a good place yeah so i like the e small altogether. so if we look at like for farming resources so these are where i go i go to the e small here because you see you have really four um control points stacked together i i usually skip metro because that one can be a pain in the ass the enemies um especially in this in the second wave can get stuck up above and so you're down below in the in the tunnels and then the enemies never come down and you end up having to run upstairs to get them and then you have to run back downstairs <laughs> and it's just like and so you end up spending too much time in metro so i skip it um and then I, I do these ones all the time when i'm looking to farm 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 i do these three back and forth so i basically i travel to this safe house i run sinkhole i jog over to solar and then i fast travel to capital and then i do the crash site then i fast travel back to this a safe house while my map is resetting then i travel then i complete sinkhole run over to solar fast travel to the capital complete crash site reset my map as i'm fast traveling you see how that works and so on and so forth and then uh, i like down here too this is the same thing because you can fast travel to the main mission jog over here fast travel here and then complete that one reset your map do it again so anyways those are uh three that I like i do like this one this one's uh, pretty decent because you can fast travel to the safe house complete that one fast travel title basement complete that one title basin complete that one and then jog over here but i hate this jog because you know it's any i don't like to run between control points because i don't need the exercise <laughs> just kidding but no that's a waste of time for me because i just want to i want to i want to clear the control point so i look for things that i can fast travel to quickly and not have a, a, a long run to get to it like this this area is really annoying because look at the gaps between here so i'll fast travel here and then you have to jog all the way over here that's a long jog actually it's kind of an annoying one and then you have to jog over here which isn't too bad uh but then you have to come all the way up over here so i end up fast traveling to potomac and then jogging back up here but i try to avoid safe houses as much as possible because if i'm wearing the, the memento backpack it's i'm gonna lose my stacks every time i go to a safe house and that's kind of annoying and then this one up here is kind of annoying too like this the the layout is is really annoying to cross the terrain so i'll find sometimes that i'll just clear this control point and then abandon the whole district i never farm this area as you can see <laughs> it's basically i hate coming up here because it's just not worth it you got these control points that are really spread out anyways i do constitution hall a lot though i do that um but my favorite are are the southern territories i think they're the most efficient way to farm because of the fast traveling so hope that helps good tip though ag good tip all right uh anubis tux are you playing 2042 yes 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 i haven't started streaming it yet though i will soon um but i've been kind of busy farming this event so it's been taking a lot of my time but uh i will eventually start uh, streaming or do videos for 20 uh, battlefield 2042 and i uh, will be inviting you guys along to um, enjoy that experience as well uh baker's dozen okay this is not a dark zone exclusive and you know sort of blah the roles that it gave me but uh let's see what else we get pyromaniac a lot of duplicates today crap uh what do we get three mops two pyros two commandos <laughs> junk and it's oh look at that another pyro wow <laughs> not happy about that come on give me something good i got more stars so we're gonna buy more in a second all right tda card there's another dark zone exclusive this is good this is a uh, really 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 good weapon of course i, I don't need it but uh this one's got eye list. The rolls aren't bad, so I would I would probably just reroll the talent and then optimize the core attribute. So I think we uh, yeah we're ready to buy more stars. So let's see what else we got. So so far from what from the drops, I think the one that I'm excited about. I mean some of these might be useful for you guys because you you don't have these things, but the one that I'm excited about is that um, that perfect bloodsucker backpack. That's a, that's a really good one. Really nice roll. I've gotten a few of them, but. Uh, need more let's see more variations of things so i can create more fun builds for you guys all right so oh look i need one more red star to buy one more 
but we are opening 20 anyways. I have um, we purchased 18 and I had two named adding caches from the rewards track. So we are purchasing 20. So um, these are the beautiful, the beautiful drops here. So let's see, where are we? We're down here at the other end. All right. So let's see what we get. Come on, give me some death grips. Give me some Emperor's Guard knee pads. That's what we're looking for. Caesar's Guard chest piece. Boo. <laughs> I've yet to use this, actually. I just don't see the point of that skill. Um, I feel like the only thing it's good for is Secret Mines, but everybody just runs hardwired for Secret Mine builds. Anybody got a good build for that? Look at that. Second hit, Liquid Engineer. God, we get a lot of duplicates today. Uh, and this one's crap. This one's crap. Uh, the talent's good, of course. The rolls aren't, aren't bad. You know, the three-quarter rolls. It's just the, the roll types. Like, I'm just explosive resistance and health. Uh, I do like explosive resistance, but it's just a specific build. And um, so it's sort of a wasted slot for me because if I want to use it for multiple builds, it's not that great. Look, another TDI card. So we are duplicating here uh, with killer. Uh, that's not bad. I kind of like that. I kind of like that. I mean, you're better off if you're going to be running a skill build with the pistol. You're probably better off running in sync just because it... Uh, it doesn't require a kill. It just requires a hit. But uh, so you get a little more burst damage out of it. Good times, boo, boo. All right, last one. Come on, come on, come on. And there it is, the death grips. All right, with status effects, which is not exactly what i was looking for but i'm probably going to keep them anyways because i might find a reason to use status effects so i'd probably change keep the status effects and then uh reroll the armature skill tier and then have a status effects version of this um you know you could run it with the scorpio shotgun uh as a build idea and then probably the vile mask and then from there just whatever and then run a status effects to build with it and then you get a little bit of armor on kill uh which is a nice thing to have on a status effect build because you usually don't have that so what do we, uh so let's do a quick uh check on how many uh dark zone exclusive items we ended up getting as a percentage but before i do i need to see if anybody gave me that answer on the um the mop we need to know if that's a dark zone exclusive Ratman of Norwich, welcome to the stream. Glad you made this one, man. Uh, terminated. What's up? I'm new to your channel and division. I was wondering if you have a video on what to sell and what to keep. I'm sort of a noob and don't want to sell something exotic, <laughs> some exotics and whatever. Um, well, geez, no, I don't because that's that's sort of a big topic, I think. Uh, and there's so many variables there. Um. So, I mean, I would, I guess my, uh, my advice to you terminated would be to focus on builds first. Um, and then, I mean, I think we've all done that. We've all crushed or sold things that we've, we regretted later on as we were coming across a build. But the reality is, is that your stash is really valuable. So uh, you'll learn that, that your stash will get full when you try to keep everything. So you're inevitably going to be deleting things anyways. You can't keep everything, even if you love it. So um but focus on crit chance crit damage um you know triple god world things um uh, up front and then i guess i would learn what weapons are worth that you're gonna love and that will save you a lot of time right there so first figure out what weapons you love do you love smgs do you love shotguns are you, are you an assault rifle guy figure that out and then figure out which variant you like do you love uh, high rpm or do you love low rpm high damage um, and then that will save you a lot of space and a lot of headache on figuring out what to delete or whatnot. So I would start there actually. Yeah, let's do that. Start there, start with your weapon class, figure out what weapon class you like, and then figure out which uh, variation of that weapon that you like. And then start, um, like, so for me, I know that I, I typically lean towards the high RPM, high accuracy thing. So I like the CTAR and the police M4. Those are my favorite assault rifles. I do use other ones, of course. 
that those are my favorite and so when i find myself saving too much you know p416s or, or g3s or whatever then you know i know i'm just kind of tying up stash space which is actually really valuable the stash space so rebel patriot i've always wanted to have the ability to make any mission including the open world legendary we all do actually i think that's something we've been asking for and they have responded to that saying it's not as easy as we think it is to to turn a mission into legendary there's a, a lot of development that goes into that and you know i get that i get that but that is something we've been asking for i would love to see at least title basin and camp white oak become legendary i think those would be two two cool things to see Okay, so Marshall Jordan says the mop is not DZ. William Crick and Dubsta all confirmed that. Uh, thanks, James Jacoby, you you as well. Okay, so that's what I needed to know. Okay, and then we'll get back to the uh, to the questions. So let's see how many Dark Zone exclusive items we got. So uh, zero, zero, uh, one, right? So there's one, and then zero, two. Uh, nope. 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 Three pyromaniacs, right? I think it was three, right? Yeah. Three pyromaniacs in a row. Uh, nope. So we're at two, right? Three. Four. Nope. Five. Six. Nope. 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 Okay, so we're at six out of twenty. That's actually really low, guys. I think uh, for for these results, I've uh, opened many, many of these, and I usually get better results than that. So let's see here. That I think that puts us at thirty percent, doesn't it? So six over twenty equals. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. So we're at uh, a thirty between thirty and thirty-three percent. So, which is actually really low. I normally get 60% of these things um, turning out to be what I need them to be. So, which is Dark Zone exclusive. But I'm not disheartened um, because I know what I'm looking for is actually pretty difficult to find. Um, even if I was getting higher results, I might, I'm at that point where I'm looking for things that are so specific that it makes it really difficult to actually farm for. So, um, it is what it is, but, so I just have to keep trying, but I also look for really unique variations. Let me pull some up for you. Um, so like, um, I find this mask as an example. I got this hollow man mask that I want to show you. Okay. So this hollow man mask. So this came from a night and named Adam cash and it dropped with God rolled skill damage on it. You see that? And so what I did is I rolled a skill tier on it and, uh, that gives me 10% health damage which is really helpful, oh, <coughs> excuse me, which is really helpful on the skill build, uh, especially for legendary because Chungas, Warhounds, Tanks, and non-elites, the red guys, are all uh, health damage recipients. So that's an example of a unique piece that I'm looking for. And then uh, looking at the knee pads, we have our Emperor's Garden. I, as you can see, I have a lot, and I also have them on my second character. But look at, so I have this one with crit chance and skill damage repair skills uh and i have some on my character now as well and i have um so what crit, more crit damage um so i got a lot of these and uh, i'm still looking for more because i haven't gotten one with armor regen already on it and that's a really a rare piece i'm wondering if anybody else has it does anybody have i've been asking this question in multiple streams so if you've been showing up then you've been um probably I'm gonna pick that up here. Oh, you guys see that? You guys see that? I lost, so I went out to clean, clear my backpack. I lost that backpack. I lost that uh, perfect blood sucker backpack. It timed out on me. You see that? That sucks. That's okay, I'm not too disappointed because I have a good one anyways, but that was a good one. I lost it. So I'm gonna deconstruct this stuff, guys, because, um, a lot of these things I just already have, unfortunately. So good, some good commandos in there. So interested to know if anybody loves that commando. But yeah, so if you do open your things, guys, anything that's sitting on the floor does time out. So keep in mind 
And I, I knew we were getting close to it because of this feed, but um, um, for how long this uh, stream has been going. So I was like, and was, that was the almost the first one that I opened. It was like the third one that I opened. So I do want that, I don't want to lose that. Um, actually, I'm gonna keep this one with Killer. I want to try that out to see if it's any fun. But, and then all these pyromaniacs. It's saying, hey, Tux, make another pyro build. Maybe, maybe I will. <laughs> you guys like your pyromaniac builds? Anybody have a good one out there? Uh, let's see what you guys have to say here. Uh, I need the orbit. I've opened seven caches so far, no dice. Yeah, yeah, the orbit's a good one. I've got quite a few actually out of the named item caches, so I'm sure it'll land for you. Um, I've probably gotten five of them out of there and I've been deleting them. It feels, it sucks to delete good dark zone gear. But um, no mix. Do the stars max out? I didn't check and had 99 stars when I finally went to cash them in. Love your content. I'm a build hound as well. All right, build hound. No mix. You need to join us, man, on uh, Discord. So if you guys aren't on my Discord, you need to head over there. It doesn't cost you anything, and it's a great place to just hook up with the community. We talk builds a lot. We got channels that are dedicated to builds and, and we're not a bunch of uh, snobs over there either. It's a good supportive community where people are posting the builds and saying, hey, I need some ideas or hey, um, this is a really good build the way I have it, you should give it a try. And you know, people are appreciative of each other and it's just a real positive community. Um, but so if you're a build connoisseur, you need to head over to my Discord. Uh, if you guys aren't uh, familiar with Discord, it's just a simple app, download it um, and then uh, search my channel out. There's a link to my Discord in this feed. Latina has been dropping it, but also I put a link on all of my videos in the description area. So you are officially invited, Nomex. Hope to see you there, man. Um, also, if you guys are looking for a good clan to kick it with, our clans are thriving in a time where clans are dying. Thanks to some really good leaders and also that solid community I've been talking about. So we now have clans on all three platforms, multiple clans on some platforms. So I'm on the Xbox myself, so I look forward to kicking it with you new Xbox clan players that have joined the Texas clan recently. So um, yeah, let's grind, looking forward to grind. I've been focused on this event, but over the next couple of weeks, I, I will be looking forward to playing with some of you guys. So we'll get you through some raids and get you some of those exotics. Buddy Darkness. Uh, it says solar farm control points give lots of stuff. Yeah, yeah, and welcome to the stream too, buddy. Let's see, I wanna make sure I didn't miss any questions. Dubster! <laughs> My boy Dubster! Rene Delir Lozano Rubio. Yes, he needs the Hollow Man mask. You do need a Hollow Man mask, Rene. You do, it's a really good mask, actually. Um, good against, like, I like it for Legendary specifically, to be honest with you, because it's, um, you know, those Chunga, there's just a lot of things that take health damage in Legendary. The Chungas, the Warhounds, all weak points, things like that. So, yeah. Um, try it on your next Legendary, but I got quite a few that I do use it on. So, you'll see me throwing it in there. Nomex says he's gotten a ton of mops and hasn't been in DZ for months. So, yeah, thanks for confirming that. I appreciate that. Uh, Digital Dog says, my favorite control point is Ivy Tunnel. That used to be my favorite too. I sort of lost taste for it. I think it's, um, I find that sometimes you probably do too, that the second wave gets stuck at the top of the tunnel and then I have to go chase them down. It's kind of annoying. They're just standing there. You know, so you'll clear out the tunnel and then you wait for the second wave and they're all just kind of standing there <laughs> and you have to go and get them. It's kind of annoying. It's like, hey guys, we're over here. The fights are over here. <laughs> Come kill me. D dumb, dumb. But yeah, if you can, I love, uh, actually, AG's got a good point where he says Ivy is cool if you can catch him out of the spawn. I love control points where I can, uh, where it's sort of easy to access or get to their spawns. Ivy Tunnel is one of them because their door is like right there at the entrance of the tunnel. Um, the other one is Overwatch. Overwatch is fun because, um, you know, you can jump around the tunnel. I like Sinkhole because of that. And Solar Farm is pretty easy. Actually, the whole East Mall is pretty easy. No Hope Hotels are also pretty easy to catch them at the spawns. Those are all good ones. Yeah, I love spawn killing, so. 
Yeah, I look forward to those. It's a good test of a build. It's sort of a DPS check too. If you can kill them all at the spawn door, then it shows that you got a pretty decent DPS. It's not the tell all of DPS, but it's a good sign that you're on, you're on the right path, so. Look at all you guys coming through, helping me out with that mop question. Appreciate you guys for doing that. That's my boys. You guys are my boys. Did you know that? Uh, I do want to talk about a little bit what we got coming up. Um, I have, so to, in, in just a little bit today, uh, probably in the next hour or two, I will be putting out uh, the calendar. So I put every week, guys. So also make sure if you are, first make sure you're subscribed and make sure you have your notifications turned on. Every Monday I put up the, the weekly calendar and what you can expect for content this week. And I try to hold to that as much as I can. Sometimes I'll, I might be a day or two behind, but for the most part, I'm uh, able to hold up to that schedule. But so this is the uh, video for today. Tomorrow I'm gonna drop for the entire community. I'm gonna declassify a build. Uh, so look forward to that. Um, really excited to share that build. On Wednesday, I'll be doing another live stream. On Thursday, I will be uh, dropping a classified build and also doing a members only stream. So if you're not a member yet, be sure you hit that join button and join Texas Players Club for the members only stream, which I will uh, most likely be uh, demonstrating and featuring the new classified build. It's an exciting one, guys. Really excited to show you the new classified build. Really good. Different, something different than we've been doing before, completely different. Um, and I was just kind of playing around with it yesterday, uh, last night, and um, I was able to control, uh, clear the uh, District Union Arena control point pretty easy with it. The first, I'm sorry, District Union Arena Legendary Stronghold, the first wave, the first checkpoint, pretty easy. That's where I go to test builds, if you guys don't know, probably notice that. But I use the entrance of District Union Arena to test uh, builds because if it's sort of a DPS check right off the bat, you know, with those tanks, and if you can't clear those tanks, then, um, you know, I go back to the drawing board and, and make some adjustments. Back in the, the build laboratory. <laughs> I got to build laboratory. What up, Malcolm? Good afternoon. A, a Ripley. A Ripley. A Ripley. Hey, bro. Do you have a gun build for solo run? Cheers, man. Yeah. Uh, do you mean a rip? Do you mean uh, what type of solo? Like solo heroic or do you mean solo legendary? Because, yeah, I do a lot of solo builds because it's, the, it's I think, the um, one of the most fun ways to play. Um, the build that I'm running today is the build that I featured yesterday. Um, and it's a ton of fun, ton of fun. It's actually, this is based on the rail splitter, but you don't have to use a rail splitter. You can use a chameleon or you can use a C-tar or a police M4. But the idea of this one is to have really good accuracy so you can laser beam on the head. And it's got amplified damage from the chest piece. I'm using perfect glass cannon. And then I'm using clutch. Um, I have perfect clutch, but you don't have to have perfect. The difference between perfect clutch and regular clutch is that the first part of the talent instead of if you are below 20% armor on the non-perfect version it says if you are below 15% armor so that's a sort of a small detail um you know so don't worry about having the perfect one i just happen to have the perfect one and i and i enjoy it that does help by the way that first part of that that talent it does help i just don't rely on it too much so anyways this is a really good uh solo build three pieces striker i'm running crit chance crit damage everywhere as you can see, crit chance, crit damage everywhere, three pieces of striker. Um, I'm running the sacrifice, perfect glass cannon, clan, per blah, 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 blah. perfect glass cannon, and it is critted out. And then I'm running the coyote's mask for even more crit damage, but it also allows me to drop my crit chance on my build. So stat wise, I show 48%, but I'm really at 60%. And then uh, I show 139%, but really this is between 150 and 165 crit damage, depending on where the enemy is. But look at the accuracy on this thing. It's 95% accuracy and it shreds, it shreds. But I invite you to check out the video that I put out yesterday. Uh, what did I call that video? I already drew a blank. <laughs> um, but uh, it's, it's. Uh, let me just look so I can make sure that I tell you the right name of it. I've put out like four builds over the last four days. So it's super amped up is what it's called. Super amped up. And it's a uh, super amped up featuring the rail splitter. So, and it's assault rifle build. But yeah, it's great to run solo with it, but it also works in group, of course. Most assault rifle builds work in group. But it's really powerful. It's really, really powerful. Empty Zed, appreciate you. All the way from Nuevo Mexico. 
<laughs> and drop into five bones. What's going on, Stephen Flanagan? Appreciate you showing up, man. Thank you for your support. No skills gaming dad. Hey, Tuxedo, I got Roosevelt Island and Legendary Solo using Ball's Outbuild. Did you finish it? Wow, good job, man. That's a big accomplishment. You know, most people don't uh, do Legendary Solos, and I get it. It takes a lot of uh, perseverance and um, a lot of patience. And then good situational awareness, that's what's really important. Uh, builds are about, you know, really 20% of the battle. The rest is uh, having a really good strategy, knowing what your strategy is going to be going in. Um, perseverance and situational awareness, those are big things to complete it. So that tells me you have all those things when you finish a legendary um, solo. But um, yeah, that build game over part two is a really good one. Um, do you, are you using the original game over build no skills or are you using the updated version? Um, if you didn't know, I did uh, version two. It's called uh, game over part two. For those of you that speak French. And um, in that part two version, I put out two more builds of uh, based off of the original game over. And they're stronger. They will allow you to spend more time out of cover and also give you more power to your primary weapon, uh, which is really, really helpful. And there's two versions, uh, one for those that spend a little bit more time in cover and, and one for those that are like to run around with their heads cut off like me. Los pollos locos is what I say. <laughs> we run around like crazy chickens with our heads cut off. So, uh, Aldo, what's a good weapon to use when you have no weapon damage, no crit chance and no red cores? Um, the chameleon is a good one um to start because it gives you 90 percent weapon damage when you get those 75 body shots so if you think about that number 90 percent um and then look at your build each uh gear slot gives you 15 percent so 15 times six so we're gonna be at 90 right there right so this side is 45 percent this side's 45 percent so basically the chameleon if you wanted to just run like um, all armor cores and run the chameleon, it's like running all weapon damage cores. You know, uh, the problem is you got to stack to get there, so keep that in mind. So the gun will, in that in that scenario, the gun will feel a little over underwhelming until you get your stacks. But it also gives you all the crit chance that you need. So if we uh, if we inspect it, look, we got 15% crit chance, uh, a little bit of stability, a little bit of accuracy, which is good. You're gonna need that, and then rounds. But you got 15% crit chance on the mod. Look at the secondary attribute on the on the stats. That's another 10% crit chance. So right there, you got 25% crit chance. Then look at adaptive instincts, the first part of the talent. When you get your 30 headshots, you get another 20% crit chance. So do the math there. So 15, 25, 45. That's 45% crit chance. And then you on your watch, you get another 10% crit chance. So Without putting any crit chance on your build, just running this chameleon, you have 55% crit chance. 50% crit damage, and then you're gonna get another, what, 20% crit damage from your watch, so you have at least 70% crit damage. So, yeah. So, I mean, this this assault rifle brings a lot of damage to the table. I like uh, creating builds around it because of that. Just do keep in mind, like, it does lack a little luster up front. Um, you know, the... Um, it just doesn't have enough upfront kick because everything has to stack. So I, that's when I run that assault rifle, I like to build that in. I like to run, um, find ways to give it a little upfront kick. Things like intimidate, glass cannon, those will all help with that spark. Uh, other than that, you know, uh, the Scorpio shotguns, shotguns are, are good to run. So the Scorpio would run if you're not running crits. The Pestilence is good if you're not running crits, but you do need weapon damage there. You do need weapon damage for that one. Um, what else I got in here? Uh, this one's not bad. Test subject. You know, you can run off. Uh, perfect in sync is a lot of burst damage, upfront burst damage. So if you're not running crits, you could rely just on perfect in sync um, with, with some weapon damage cores. So yeah, hope that helps a little bit. You got some options there for you. 
Uncle Murph, good morning from Thailand. Hey, appreciate you, man. Welcome. Welcome. Good that we have people down there in the... Uh, what would we call that? The so the Southern Hemisphere? <laughs> or close enough. Are you are you technically the Southern Hemisphere, Dana? Yeah, you are, right? So, that's cool. You're, you're probably in the same uh, time zone those folks from New Zealand and Australia are, I imagine. But, yeah, glad to have you, man. Took you three and a half hours. Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, I think it's a lot of patience. Once you uh, know skills, yeah, once you clear that first checkpoint, then from there, yeah, patience, patience. But some builds are easier than others. Like, you know, negotiator's dilemma makes it pretty easy. That's sort of like a hold your ground strategy. But for these out of cover builds, you know, um, you probably find yourself playing a little bit more aggressive sometimes, but. Hello from Kalmar, Sweden, a Grimner. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. I imagine you're eight hours ahead of me, uh, so it's probably nine o'clock in your evening, 9.30 in your evening. Yeah, so welcome, appreciate you, man. So I am uh, getting close to the end of this stream, guys. It's uh, not gonna be, wasn't intended to be too long of one, but I will answer a few more questions. So if you got them, please throw them in. I love answering you guys' questions. I could actually hang out here all day doing that. Uh, while you guys are thinking of good questions to come up with, let me just do a couple of shameless plugs here. But if you didn't know, I do classified builds. These are secret builds made for just, just for Texas Players Club true and hardcore Bandito member levels. These are extra builds I make as a thank you for supporting me, the channel, and then for the entire community, because that's what I do is I build and support the community. So if you want to tap into these secret builds, you can get access today by making sure you're at least a true Bandito member level. And it's really easy to do. All you got to do is hit that little tiny little join button. It's in green right below the video window. You hit that out, you help me out a lot. And also I help you back with some good perks. So I'll see you on the member side if you're not already there. Also, make sure you head over to my Discord. That is a free resource for you. Lots of build resources. Also, you can get together with the Tux Clans. That's the easiest place to run into them. Um, and we have Tux Clans on all platforms. And if you're a solo player, it's time to get associated because we need to help you expand the game. The, the game really does expand when you connect with clan members. Uh, get some experience in the raids, get those weapons, and also just have a good, really good time. But if you're a build connoisseur, then you definitely want to head over to my Discord. Again, there's no cost to that. That is a, a, a resource for you. And for you people that are part of Texas Players Club, like Ratman Norwich, appreciate you, man. Um, then make sure you also check out the channel resource um, that's on my YouTube channel. There's a, a, a playlist that's just for members. And it's got, uh, doesn't host, it hosts um, members only live streams uh, from the past, but also all those classified builds that I'm talking about. So like, for example, if you just joined today, there's a library of classified builds that you have access to that you can head over there to check. Um, I think I will, uh, might've already posted it. Let me see here. Um, Yeah, so this morning, uh, I wanted to make sure I posted it. So this morning I did post uh, two members. <coughs> I posted a link to that. So a look, you can go to my channel. There's a tab called Community tab. If you go there, you can see all my posts. You should also have notifications turned on if you're subscribed. If you're not subscribed, then you should do that now before you forget. And um, anyways, I did a post today giving you a link to that playlist in case you haven't discovered it all on your own. But. Uh, and I will do that from uh, time to time so you guys don't forget that you have that resource. There's also a private channel on my Discord that um, that gives you exclusive access to me. And so if you want to chat it out with me, if you have build questions or whatever, you can always go to uh, my Discord. There's a Players Club private channel just for members. So that's also a place um, you can go to hunt me down. Uh, let me see. Let me uh, look at a couple of these questions. I saw one here. Tux, heard you comment about Ireland last stream. Well, I'm from Northern Ireland. Stephen Flanagan, yeah. Actually, so I used to live in uh, Buenos, Arge Buenos Aires, Argentina, which is the southern part of South America. And I lived there for three and a half years. And uh, a lot of my friends there were from Ireland or Northern UK, uh, Northern uh, England. So, um, uh, but they were Irish. So like a lot of my friends were Irish. And so uh, just really good people just sort of fell in love with the Irish. Um, and we have, a you know, in the US, we have a lot of Irish descendants, uh, a lot of Irish descendants, probably half of everybody's Irish descendant here. <laughs> but 
um, you know, it's just, it's not like meeting somebody. It's not like somebody that has the Irish culture in them. Just really friendly, really, really friendly people, really welcoming. Um, and a lot of travelers would come through from Ireland as well. And, um, I was always drawn to them. Very nice people. So anyways, appreciate you and your people, Stephen Flanagan. Welcome to the channel, by the way. Welcome to the channel. Dubsta75 says, yeah, the Scorpio is good when you have no reds. Yeah, I agree with that. Agree with that. And he also loves running around like a headless chicken. <laughs> Me too. Thus, game over builds. Use the game over builds if you like running around like a chicken, but no head. Rogue Agents uh, asks, what's a good level to get good weapons? I'm currently running on challenging. Um, I do everything on heroic, you know. I do, but challenging, you know, I think you can get good exotics, I, I feel like. But for me, I got to eliminate. You're still getting that yellow gear on challenging, right? So the devs updated the uh, loot system uh, in regards to quality back in the beginning of, I think it was either TU9 or the beginning of TU10. And so they made it so that you're getting higher quality drops in both heroic and legendary, which are really similar to each other as far as quality of drops, by the way. So... Um, but you will find that you're getting more triple god rules than legendary. That should actually be the case, but it's not a significant change between heroic and legendary. So the, I think the best place is heroic because it eliminates all of that purple gear. Um, and then from there, um, it's also more efficient than legendary. You know, you can clear more legendary, more heroic content than you can legendary content in an hour. So basically that's the sweet spot for gear. Um, control points specifically. Um, when I'm farming, I go to control points. Damn flies. Always bugging me. Damn flies. So yeah, I hope that helps a little bit, bud. Uh, Willie asks, uh, do you have a good Banshee pull status effect build? I've been really enjoying it with your game over build in Legendary Summon against the War Dogs and want to be like an Irish Banshee. <laughs> Just screaming like a bat out of hell at everybody. Rawr! Rawr! <laughs> Um, so Willie, I would look at Max Blind. All right, there's a build called Max Blind. Um, really good build. Actually, I use it a lot against Hunters. Um, it's, it's really effective in, in Legendary and Heroic. Um, and basically what it does is it, it just neutralizes all the enemies so that they're, if it has no cooldowns. It's a no cooldown build for the Blinder Firefly. Um, and I usually use it with the, um, EMP or fire sticky bomb right behind it, uh, because it runs off a tag team. So you got to have something with damage. Um, and then, uh, it makes a net zero cooldown. So basically what that means is that the status of the, du the duration time is equal to what the cooldown is. So you end up with a net zero cooldown. So if there's an enemy standing in front of you. You throw the blinder firefly, he's blind for 10 seconds, and then your cooldown is 10 seconds. Then by the time he becomes unblind, you can blind him again. So you got a net zero cooldown. So that's what max blind is. Um, and I've made it so it's actually a negative cooldown so that you can throw out more than one blinder firefly, uh, which is really good for legendary because they're always running around uh, and it's, uh, they're kind of spread out. So you want to be able to toss more than one uh, firefly out to sort of neutralize the crowd. And then you or your enemy can just mow them over just because they're just blind and dumb. It's basically what it is. So try that. It'll be basically works with any status effect skill that has a cooldown. So you, it'll work with Riot Foam. It'll work with the Binder Firefly, of course. And then um, any of the pulses. So yeah, try that one out. It's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. It's basically a running gun skill build. You're really busy. You're not just sitting there throwing out skills kind of being bored you're really really busy <laughs> you hardly have time to use your gun because your, your skills have no cooldown so you're constantly throwing them out and uh and keep just to keep the enemy blind and dumb and your team will love you for that uh oh willie all your family's irish too yeah you had the bad luck of being born in england huh <laughs> i don't know if that's too bad of luck you could be born over here in the US, is that bad luck? I don't know. Yeah, heroic it is. Yeah, rogue. Yeah, yeah. I know it's a little more difficult than challenging, but 
You're gonna get there anyways. Uh, today's the last day of reanimation, guys. Okay, good. Uh, what a what a seventy seven reminds me. Hey, how much uh, how much time do we have left on reanimation? So reanimation ends. Uh, let me see. It'll tell us right here. Actually, if you look in your menu menu, it'll tell you how much time you have left. It ends in ten hours and twelve minutes. So ten hours and twelve minutes left on reanimation. So I'm probably gonna get one more red star, and then I'm gonna uh, probably call it for reanimation for me. But um, yeah, a lot of fun. One of my favorite events. I think I enjoyed this one as well as Golden Bullet. Uh, this guy over here. Um, so, and I think this is the end of the season. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's usually a week or two gap and then they're gonna start the next season. So probably around December 15th, I believe is probably when they're gonna uh, kick off the next season. So um, look forward to that. And the next season is gonna be a makeshift season. So they're gonna stitch together uh, some of our favorite events. Um, yeah, this is week 12 of 12. So this is the end of the season. So yeah, I'm not sure what we're gonna expect, what to expect, uh, but they say that they're gonna give us our favorite season events all in the same season. Let's see if they get that right or if it's just gonna be uh, basically what we've got. <laughs> but I hope it's a, re a bunch more reanimated golden bullets. Those are my favorite. But we're also gonna be getting an apparel event, so look out for that. Um, it's supposed to be a new apparel event. It will not be recycled according to uh, the associate creative director. So um, yeah, so new apparel event. So the mask I have wearing near here is a hunter's mask. And um, it's uh, a Santa Claus looking like hunter's mask, which is pretty cool. And this came from an apparel event. So you get cool stuff like that from the Provence and I like it. It's kind of, it's part of the game. It's the lore. As you can tell, I'm wearing a mask myself. I usually wear, uh, this is a replica of the mask my character usually wears, um, the tuxedo bandito mask. Uh, Wave the Filipino, let's see what uh, he's got to offer us. I made a Hunter's Fury build with 1.7 million armor and dish out 2 million crits. But no armor regen, uh, just armor on kill. Yeah, that's all you need. I have a Sokolov chest piece, but want Bellstone. 10% of big loss for damage. No, not when you're putting out 2 million crits. Actually, the 10% uh, the, the damage, it's, well, I think Sokolov is, gives you 15% damage, doesn't it? But that, either way, isn't that significant. You're mostly relying on crits. Um, and that's actually, get, it's hard to get high crits on, on a Hunter's Fury build, right? You don't have all the slots there to do it. It's more of an amplified damage uh, concept, that build set. It's really amplified damage that's powering that thing. So realize that. I mean, you can get up to 45% amplified damage not using Intimidate or Adrenaline Rush. So that's, that's a really strong strong gear set because of that um so the crits are sort of just a bonus on top so you're not gonna miss that sockle of chest piece but at the same time 20 percent armor on kill that the set gives you is isn't it 20 percent armor and kill that's plenty think about it man i mean do you need more armor and kill i don't think you need a bellstone chest piece in my opinion i would stay on the damage side of things but you could probably switch that sockle of piece for a group of chest piece but I don't think I have any Hunter's Fury on, on this character right now. I don't. So, um, but yeah, I would switch out that Sokolov chest piece for a Grupo chest piece. You're better off with more crit damage instead of uh, uh, base weapon damage because that's additive and crit damage is multiplicative. So I'd swap out Sokolov for Grupo. Try that variation. But you're uh, if you're running Gunner, I'm a, which I assume you are, you're probably running Gunner and Gunner is giving you 10% armor on kill. And then Hunter's Fury gives you, it's 20% armor on kill, for, if I'm not mistaken. So that's 30% armor on kill. I don't think you need more defense with that. You're, if you're spending a lot, out of cover, a lot of time out of cover, bonus armor could help. But I wouldn't add in armor regen. That's too slow for a running gun build. Um, it does help sometimes. You know, it helps you kind of take a few extra bullets. But... Um, you know, with that kind of armor and kill, I would say you're good. Just focus on your time to kill for survivability, for more survivability there. Yeah, or Cheska's chest is the other piece, but if you're running in this, uh, an SMG, which it sounds like you are, you probably don't need Cheska. But you could run Cheska and then roll on more crit damage to your other slide, uh, pieces, so that it works the same that way. 
So how do apparel events work? We don't know what this apparel event is yet, but apparel events work basically, um, they're kind of like, they. Uh, it's been a while since we had one, so I'm kind of drawn from memory, but um, basically just by, it's usually by leveling, it's like a leveling up system. So as you play the apparel event, as you level up, as you progress in your character. So basically every level up you get, Oh, it's actually not every level it's like every two levels so basically every two levels so every uh, two watch levels shd watch levels right every two levels you'll get uh, a key and then you go um to let me see i'm sorry i'm looking for my uh where do i go for my it's been a while since i've gone there apparel caches yeah so then you're they're here so uh the, when you have an apparel event um there'll be a, a space here where you can open these caches so every two levels you'll get a key and then you could open up a, a special cache for that all right but they'll give us more details there might be something else to it i don't know um we'll see but what's up ld welcome to the stream we're just about to wrap it up though. So you're gonna have to watch this on the replay. Yeah, we need a full Santa outfit. That would be cool. Can you imagine running around in an all red Santa's gear with like the the, the white fluffy collar and all that stuff? Oh man, that'd be hilarious. Bunch of killer Santas out there. <laughs> oh man, that's a good place to leave it. All right guys, hit the subscribe if you haven't. Be sure to hit the like button right now. And join Texas Players Club if you haven't. And otherwise I will see you manana for uh i'll probably do a live premiere on uh the declassified bill look forward to that see you guys thanks for your support hope this was helpful